In this slide, you are introduced to the experimental way of determining diffusivity of carbon tetrachloride through air. Carbon tetrachloride evaporates into the gas mixture above the liquid meniscus. It is assumed that the evaporation is much faster than the diffusion away from the surface. In other words, the liquid and vapor is in equilibrium, and the partial pressure of carbon tetrachloride is equal to the vapor pressure of carbon tetrachloride. Furthermore, due to the flow of air at the top, acting as a sink for the carbon tetrachloride, the partial pressure of carbon tetrachloride at the top is zero pascals. In the vertical tube, the air is stationary, while the carbon tetrachloride diffuses upwards through this stationary air. N, A, dashed, is the effective flux of carbon tetrachloride up the tube, which includes diffusion and bulk flow. The moles can be converted to mass, volume, and distance, using molecular mass, density, and the definition of volume respectively. Note that the evaporation rate is equal to N, A, dashed, to maintain the liquid, vapor equilibrium. Here you are using the formula for diffusion of a gas through a stationary gas. You can convert the concentrations to partial pressures using the ideal gas law. You can plug these values into the equation above and solve for the diffusivity, d. You can compare this value of diffusivity with the one obtained in the example 10.2 of Coulson and Richardson. If it is not easy to measure the diffusivity experimentally, Gilliland has proposed a model that you can use, based on the molecular masses, and the molecular volumes, of molecules of type A, diffusing through molecules of type B. If you assume that the value contained by the big round brackets is constant, then you can propose an equation, for the diffusivity of carbon tetrachloride, that holds for all temperatures and pressures. Check this equation by using the temperature of 321 Kelvin, and pressure of 101,325 pascals, for, T, and P. Try to set up this equation, by yourself, by determining the value of the constant, which is equal to 0 0.0001515. Maxwell postulated that the partial pressure gradient of A, due to another component, is proportional to the relative velocity, and also to the product of the molar concentrations, of the two components, while being inversely proportional to the diffusivity of A, through the other component. The proportionality constant is R, times T, divided by the total gas concentration. This constant was obtained by comparison with a two-component fixed system. The contributions of components B and C have been added to get the total partial pressure gradient of A. The velocity of A is equal to the molar flux of A divided by the concentration of A. For an ideal gas, the partial pressure of 
a is equal to c a r t you can have a situation where a diffuses through stationary b and c and then the velocities of b and c are zero substituting these four equations into the equation above you can solve for the molar flux of a The expression, in the round brackets, represents the effective diffusivity. C, B, and C, C, can both be written in terms of, C, A, and C, T, for a given stationary gas mixture. You can then integrate the expression to solve for the molar flux of, A. This slide presents the case of equimolar counter diffusion through a tapered tube, where the radius gradually increases from R1 to R2 over a distance of L. The molar flow rate is equal to the molar flux, n, a, times the cross-sectional area, which is, pi, r, squared. For the calculation of r, say you are halfway between points 1 and 2, then you should add half the radius increase, r2, minus, r1, to the initial radius. Check this integration, as it was performed by the lecturer. You can see that, if, R1, is equal to, R2, then the area term reverts to, pi, R, squared, which is the formula of the cross-sectional area of a cylinder, as required. 